Hello and everyone. Welcome to the brand new edition of the Question Hour show from the Parliament House Complex. The show where we bring you important, unstart question to you, asked by the members of the Upper House, and the response given by the government in written format. I'm Priti Mishra, and joining me is my colleague Prajat King. Well, thanks, Priti, and thanks to our viewers for joining us on the Question Hour, the show where we get you, broadly speaking, three categories of questions. Start where answers are given directly on the floor of the House. Unstart where answers are deemed to be late, considered on the table of the House after the end of the proceeding. And lastly, short notice questions. So, Kriti, let's begin the show. And the first question in this edition is from three members, Member Chaya Verma, Member Sukram Singh Yadav, and Member Vishambar Prasad Nishad. And these members have asked this question to the Ministry of Women and Child Development and they've sought details about the schemes run by the Ministry and also uh, the year-wise and scheme-wise details of the amount of funds remaining unutilised during the last three years. Well, giving a detailed response to query, the Ministry said the scheme-wise and year-wise details of budget estimates and expenditures along with the reasons for unspent fund in respect of major social schemes of Ministry of Women and Child Development during the last three years are given in the annexures. Now, these annexures contain the details year-wise for which the year happens to be 2016-17, the name of the scheme, budgetary provisions, actual expenditure and savings. Now, the first scheme being the National Nutrition Mission of the program component, details are given of the budgetary provision, actual expenditures and the savings. Now, scheme is in the process of being reviewed and recast. The approval of component authority for the revised NNM, that is National Nutrition Mission, could not be obtained before closing of the financial year. Secondly, National Nutrition Mission, EAP component, uh, again, uh, they have given the figures uh, of, of uh, the budgetary provisions, actual expenditures and savings, and less expenditure on part of states leading to less demand. Third, Indira Gandhi, Matra Vita Sahayog Yojana Maternity Benefit Program. Again, uh, they have given figures of budgetary provisions, actual expenditures and savings. Now, less ex expenditures on the part of states leading to less demand. Approval for expansion in coverage of schemes and pan-India pan basis was awaited. Fourthly, National Creche Scheme, uh, again they have given uh, figures of uh, the budgetary provisions, actual expenditures and savings. Now, less demand because of NGOs' inability to get registered with the Niti IO portal. Fifth, National Institute of Public Cooperation and Child Development, figures given for the actual expend, uh, I beg your pardon, for budget provisions, actual expenditures and savings. Now, less demand from the organization construction of office building at Patna could not begin. Sixth, hostel for working women, figures given for uh, the budgetary provisions, actual expenditures and savings, less demands received from implementing agency and less proposals completed in all respect received through states. Seventh, support to training and employment in an acronym STEP, figures given for the budgetary provision, actual expenditures and savings, number of proposals complete in all respects were less. Eighth. Swadesh Grahe, figures given for uh, the budget provisions, actual expenditures and saving. Now, some states did not send complete proposal. Ninth, National Mission for Empowerment of Women, uh, figures for budgetary provisions, actual expenditure and savings. Some proposals for release of grant of the states could not be processed for want of, the, of some documents. And tenth, comprehensive scheme for combating trafficking of women and children, Ujwala. Uh, figures given for the budget provisions, uh, actual expenditures and savings, number of proposals complete in all respects were less. Eleventh, Beti Bachao, Beti Padao. Figures given for budgetary provision, actual expenditure and savings, the following restructuring of schemes with the approval of Department of Expenditure, release of funds under scheme was changed to district collectors in place of state governments during middle of the financial year, opening up of devoting accounts of the district level and linkages the same under PFMS uh, took some time. In some cases, PMF, uh, PFMS linkages did not materialize, hence release of funds under the scheme had been slow, resulting into savings. Women helpline figures given for the budgetary provisions, actual expenditures and savings. Following restructuring of the scheme with approval of Department of Expenditure, release of funds under scheme was changed to district collectors. In place of state government during the middle of the financial year, opening of deducted account at the district level and linkages, the same under PFMS took some time. 
In some cases, PFMS linked linkage did not materialize, hence release of funds under scheme had been slow, resulting into the savings. And lastly, 13 number, one-stop center figures given for the budgetary provision, actual expenditures and saving. The following restructuring of scheme with the approval of Department of Expenditure, release of funds under scheme was changed to district collector in the place of state government during middle of financial year, opening of a deducted account at district level and linkages of the same under PFMS took some time. In some case, PFMS linkage did not materialize, hence release of funds under scheme had been slow, resulting into the savings. So quite a detailed reply with emphasis on the figures they have given in terms of the budgetary uh, allocation, actual expenditures and the savings. And joining us on the question our show is Rajasbhai MP, Mr. Sukram Singh Yadav. Sir, welcome to Rajasbhai TV and thank you so much for joining us. Sir, in the last question, you asked the question of how the Women and Child Development Mantrale is in the social sector scheme, how the money is spent, how the money is allocated, is a very important question, sir. Look, the government's answer, as the government's answer, I will not do much more. But the job is different from the job and the job is different from the job. जो कार्य पढ़ित करने का तरीका है उसमें कहीं ना कहीं खामियां हैं जब तक हम उसको कार्य पे पढ़ित नहीं करेंगे तब तक ट्रस्ट का कोई औचित्य नहीं बनता और मैं समझता हूं कि सरकारें केवल सदस्यों संतुष्ट करने का ही जवाब देती हैं उसको धरातल पे लाने का काम नहीं करती जब तक धरातल पे नहीं आएगा हमारा सवाल तब तक ये हम समझते हैं कि हम अपने जो हमने पूछा है उससे पीछे हट जाते देखिए स्कीम तो उन्होंने बनाई लेकिन स्कीम में ये बनाई वो स्कीम है ग्रामीण स्तर पर नहीं पहुंची अभी शहर में तो चर्चा होती है इनकी लेकिन जहां तक प्रश्न है ग्राम ग्रामीण क्षेत्र का है उन क्षेत्रों में कहीं भी अभी धरातल पर नहीं आए जब तक हम गांव में धरातल पर नहीं ला पाएंगे गांव के बच्चों में विकास विकसित नहीं कर पाएंगे योजनाओं का तब तक मैं समझता हूँ कि हम तरक्की नहीं कर पाएंगे और बच्चे कहीं ना कहीं दिशा भ्रमित हो जाएगी जो सर बहुत ही नुकसानदायक होगा देश के लिए क्या सुझाव देना चाहेंगे आप सरकार को मेरा यही सुझाव है कि सबसे पहला काम ये है कि एजुकेशन में प्राइमरी एजुकेशन के साथ ही ये व्यवसायिक व्यवस्थाएं जोड़ देनी चाहिए ताकि बच्चे को शुरुआत से ही एक लाइन बन जाए एक दिशा बन जाए उसे क्या करना है और ऐसी दिशा बने जिससे उसका लाभ भी हो परिवार का लाभ भी हो और समाज और देश का लाभ भी हो इस दिशा में उसको चलना चाहिए उसके लिए सरकार को चाहिए कि कहीं ना कहीं परिवर्तन करना पड़ेगा इन योजनाओं के माध्यम से ही ऐसी लोगों को जागृत करने का प्रयास करना होगा तभी हम आगे इसको डेवलप कर पाएंगे चाइल्ड एजुकेशन पे सबसे जरूरी है चाइल्ड एजुकेशन अगर अच्छी होगी और वहीं से शुरुआत होता है तो उस पर सारी एजुकेशन तो अपने आप बच्चे पढ़ लेंगे लेकिन छोटे बच्चे जब पढ़ने जाते हैं उनको कहाँ जाना है उनके मन में क्या है बच्चे में क्या कौशल है उस कौशल को जानकारी अध्यापक के द्वारा स्कूल के द्वारा और बच्चे के गार्जियन के द्वारा होगी उस कौशल को आगे हम डेवलप करेंगे उससे आगे बढ़ाएंगे तभी ही इसका लाभ मिल पाएगा और बहुत जरूरी है प्राइमरी एजुकेशन के साथ साथ इस प्रदेश और देश को बचाने के लिए बच्चों में जागृति पैदा करनी पड़ेगी माँ बाप को भी कहना पड़ेगा बच्चे की विचारधारा क्या है बच्चे के बारे में सोच क्या है उस सोच को डेवलप करना होगा तभी हम आगे बढ़ा सकते हैं अपने प्रदेश और देश को सुखराम जी आप हमसे जुड़े आपने हमसे ये बातचीत की बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद राज्यसभा टीवी से बात करने के लिए आपको धन्यवाद Well, moving on to next question asked by members Sardar Balwinder Singh Bhundar and Kanta Kardam from Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare. The member asked details of various kinds of subsidies provided to agriculture sector and the amount allocated for purpose during last three years and the current year. And giving a detailed reply to this question, the government says that some of the components or schemes through which government provides subsidies to farmers are seeds. Department uh, is implementing sub-vision on seeds and planting materials from the year 2014-15 to promote production and multiplication of quality of seeds of agricultural crops so that the required quantities of seeds could be made available to the farmers in the country. To upgrade the quality of farmers' safe seeds, financial assistance for distribution of foundation, certified seeds at 50% cost of the seeds for cereal crops and 60% for pulses, oil seeds, fodder and green manure crops for production of quality seeds is available or provided in one acre per farmer under the component seed village program. The objective of the scheme is to make available improved high yielding varieties of seeds to the farmers in time and to achieve self-sufficiency in respect of seeds at village level itself. 
The above see, uh, scheme and the component is uh, demand driven and implemented by the concerned state or implementing agencies for welfare of all categories of farmers, which help in enhancing productivity or production of various crops and also improving the profitability of the agriculture sector in the country. The next one is mechanization and technology. So a submission on agricultural mechanization is being implemented with effect from 2014-15. This uh, provides a suitable platform for convening all activities for inclusive growth of agriculture mechanization by providing a single window approach for implementation with special focus on small and marginal farmers with the following objectives. Now the objectives include increasing the reach of farm mechanization to small and marginal farmers and to regions where availability of farm power is low. Promoting custom hiring centers to offset the adverse economies of scale arising due to small land holding and high cost of individual ownership. Creating hubs for high tech and high value farm equipment. Creating awareness among stakeholders through demonstration and capacity building activities. And now let's move on to the last question of this edition of the question hour show asked by member Harnath Singh Yadav. And this question also pertains to the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare. And the member has asked whether the government is aware of the fact that increasing global warming is adversely affecting our crop production, which is wheat, rice and other major crops, and whether the government has any action plan to prevent such adverse effects of increasing global warming on our crop production. Now, giving a detailed response to Kerry, the ministry said the global warming associated with the increase in concentration of greenhouse gases in atmosphere is one of the reasons for increasing extreme weather events. Now, due to global warming, agriculture sector is likely to be affected and climate change is expected to impact yields of agriculture crops in a business as usual scenario. Now, simulation studies using integrated modeling framework showed that rain-fed rice yields in India are projected to reduce marginally, that is less than 2.5% in the year in 2050 and 2080 scenario, while irrigated rice yields are projected to reduce by 7% in 2050 and 10% in 2080 scenarios. Climate change is projected to reduce wheat yield by 6 to 25% towards the end of century with significant spatio-temporal variations. Climate change in 2050 and 2080 scenarios is projected to reduce the Kharif maize yield by 18 to 23 percent. The Kharif groundnut yield are projected to increase to be increased by 4 to 7 percent in 2050 scenario, while in 2080 scenario, the yield is likely to decline by 5 percent. Future climate are likely to benefit strictly with increase in productivity. Now that increase has been pegged at 23 to 54 percent. Well, that's it in this edition of Question Hour, but do not go anywhere. Stay tuned to Rat Sabha TV for more and Hindi version of Question Hour Prashankar. Thanks for watching and stay safe.